In the early 1950s, enchiladas were a new idea in the United States. And our mother jumped right on that idea and was famous for what they called Norma's enchiladas. And she started out with a can of Las Palmas um, uh, enchilada sauce. And then she would put it together. And it was the same simple recipe over and over again. Um, that was uh, 75 years ago. And we have had family members and friends mail us Norma's enchiladas. And none of the recipes are exactly the same. So we thought we would prove the point <coughs> that there are many ways to roll an enchilada and out of affection we might call them Norma's enchiladas but today we are presenting Joanne's, Bonnie's and Diana's enchiladas, our version. I'm making chicken enchiladas and the first thing I do is heat my tortillas in the microwave and then I also get my pan prepared and spread it really well. And we like our enchiladas with onions, so I have cut some in, in here, and I'll show you how this little device works. <laughs> and that's all you do for this, and any way you can get the onion cut. Okay, so I have my tortillas here on a plate that I have heated in the microwave so that you can roll them. What I like to do is a lot of people have dipped their tortillas in oil to get them. It, it does help the flavor too. There's something about a fried flavor that's good. So I use Pam and then I just go through the whole stack. Spray it. Well you do the Pam all at once. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then when I've finished I spray it the top of, of everything. Here. So you don't do the back side, just no, the No, because it's enough. It's enough to give, the, give that flat front kind of the, having this on here kind of keeps it from falling apart after you've baked it. Okay, then I just like that. And now I will start filling them, which I guess that's in the way, isn't it? Okay. So what I'll do is put Tablespoon, about a tablespoon and a half of chicken, a little cheese, a little bit of onion. And then you start at one side and push all your ingredients close and try to roll it as tight as you can. And then I'll just, well, I can all just continue this and show you when it's finished. Okay. I have finished rolling all of my enchiladas and I uh, made 12 and it fits pretty nicely in this pan. And so I also want to spread the top of all of them so that they can, I'm trying to mimic the fried flavor. And then I will, the sauce that I use is a combination of um, uh, green, green and red. It's equal, you do one can of each. One right? can of each. So I will put a little bit on there. So it's one part to one part, right? Yeah. And you want to make sure you get plenty of sauce. I do for myself is again like Diana she has cheese in this in the center so I like to see where they are so I just put it right down the middle I like to see where the when my family serves it they make a mess of the whole <laughs> they can't see where so you put it in little rows like yeah the enchilada yeah so that they won't um, mutilate the enchiladas okay, so they can see where the seeds see where are. it is yeah and then some on the side. And then I will bake this at 350. 
for 30 minutes and then on broil for 10 minutes. For my version of enchiladas, I'm going to use the flavors our mother Norma used, and that is red enchilada sauce with beef and then lots of cheese. So I began by several days ago, I pre-fried my, I pre-browned uh, my ground beef. I mixed it in a bowl with cheese, just about a third of each, and then poured in sauce. So that I had kind of a mushy mixture that I put in these. These are uh, silicone molds you can order on Amazon that are really for baking Twinkies, but they're also perfect for enchilada filling. So these are the ones that I have ready to go and they're frozen so they just pop right out of the uh, mold and that's what I'm going to, how I'm going to uh, wrap my enchiladas. So I, I also wanted to say that one of these cans is, um, there, this can is the equivalent of five of these cans. So it's a lot cheaper if you want to handle more enchilada sauce. Then buy a big can and either freeze what you don't need. If you're making enchiladas and you haven't exactly decided how many and you have lots of supplies to, um, to combine, you just don't want to run out of the enchilada sauce. So I'm going to use the remainder of the can that I opened the other day to make the filling. And then I'm going to assemble um, my enchiladas. I've just softened mine in a microwave wrapped in a parchment paper. You can do a whole stack for a minute and that's fine. And um, there are other ways to do it. So I've just taken these and wrapped these little ones. I'll show you one. And then I just, well, I'm going to do the other, but I'm doing one the way I used to do it, but now I'm changing my ways. And then you just plop that in. But now I'm going to try Bonnie's method and let's move this so that, can you see the tortillas? So I'm gonna try since I just learned from Bonnie and I'm gonna go tortilla to tortilla. And you can see that one spray is gonna do the front and the back of both tortillas. So this is a real fast way. The um, authentic Mexican method was to always soften tortillas in uh, hot oil. I have memories of, we had two wonderful young teenage girls from Mexico living with us for a while because our mother worked full time. And um, they would always soften the tortillas and for Randy, that's why he loves Mexican food. He'd sit in his high chair while they'd wave one in the air to cool it and then they'd just toss it on his high chair with a little salt on it on the tray. And he is a true lover of all things uh, Mexican. So here we go on my, I'm putting mine in. Um, I'm not used to doing it on camera so it may look a little sloppier than it should. But you'll get the idea that with the filling already frozen, it's very fast to make these. Do you have to thaw, let it sit to thaw before you cook it? You no, I just make sure it's thoroughly heated in the oven. And it, it's, it's kind of, it can be messy, but since I've been doing it this uh, frozen center method, it really is very quick to roll enchiladas. I should have thought of it before we decided to have enchiladas at a family reunion one time. And it was a bear getting uh, 75 enchiladas rolled at the last minute. But I didn't think it, that might be why I remembered to try this. Kept thinking, oh, how can I do this easier? And there's just a lot less mess. Can you do it the other ways? Yes, and you should. But if, in your, if you're in a hurry and you want to roll a lot of enchiladas, um, this has been very successful for me. It's all portioned and ready. And there you are, because I've got the cheese inside. So I've, com I've uh, completed the wrapping of my enchiladas. And all I have to do is put um, sauce on it. I will use both the can that I've opened up and finish the can that I oops finish that I can the can that I started um, when I pre-made the frozen centers. So it's a little thicker in that small jar. I think it's because I forgot to stir. So ignore the thin one you saw. 
And then why it's hard to measure is because the art is to make sure that you get your tortilla all at least moistened, I mean all moistened, with this enchilada sauce. I love the red sauce because that's what we had when we were children. But I'm certainly glad that the green sauces have been developed and I'm anxious to try Joanne's homemade sauce. The sauce makes a difference. So mom always used Las Palmas, that was it. That was her big secret. But back in the early 50s, she was the only one making enchiladas. And um, so here we have, when I can reach the cheese, I'll sprinkle some cheese in. So when it's all baked, you won't be able to tell that um, they were all pre-formed fillings. It'll all be hot and bubbly and uh, ready to serve. I'm not putting a lot of cheese on the top, that's fine, because I've got a lot of cheese already frozen in the filling. Well, I'm gonna start out um, with my enchilada recipe, making the sauce. And it takes a bit of time, because instead of using a canned sauce, you make your own. Um, I, I, um, so it starts off with three-fourths of a cup of oil. Why do you want to turn that on to the eye? And um, a half a cup of, of flour. So basically you're making a roux, a roux again. But you're using liquid oil. You're using liquid oil. Do you want five? Yeah. So. I'm going to cook this for about five minutes. So now this is actually turned uh, kind of brownish and you have to be careful. Um, it seems like fairly easy to scorch. I don't remember being this easy, but for some reason today it's seeming easy to scorch. So keep a watch on that. So the next thing I'm going to do is add um, um, so two to four tablespoons of chili powder. Now my problem with chili powder is it says grandma's chili powder. And I've loved this recipe for years and suddenly a couple years ago I couldn't get grandma's chili powder. So I, um, I added just whatever chili powder and I kept feeling like, oh I must have scorched it and I must have cooked it too long. And so then I um, was researching it. I was thinking, you know, I might go to a different recipe because I just didn't like it like I used to. And um, it occurred to me, oh yeah, I couldn't find grandma's chili powder. And I looked online just last week to see where I could find it um, and see if that made a difference and they don't make it anymore. Different companies bought it out and then they chose not to make it. So this one is one I just saw and I tried it. I mean, I have not tried it. It's Gephardt, but it's a red color. And I remember grandma's was kind of a red color and it kind of smells like it. So I'm gonna try this and I'll let you know. Um, I saw a whole blog of people talking to what's similar to it or what can they find or how to make your own and then making your own was a big pro pro um, process and I just said, oh, I'm never gonna do that. So I'm gonna put three um, tablespoons of chili powder, two to four, so I'll average it. And this is the get part. This is the get parts. Um, and see if I still, still like it as well as I like the other one. So there's three tablespoons of that, a half a teaspoon of oregano. I like to put my hands and crush it in there. And then um, a half a teaspoon of salt. Um, and garlic to taste. Um, I'm just using this garlic um, uh, granulated. granulated garlic. I'm just going to pour a little bit in. And let's see, is that everything? I think that's all. Um, so I stir that in. And then I add right here, if you add um, six cups of chicken broth. Now you can use, if I were boiling the um, At all at once. Oops, except for this. Um, if I were boiling the chicken, 
um, but we already had cooked chicken, I would just use the six cups of the water that I boiled the chicken in. Um, since I didn't, I just put in six cups, per cup you put one teaspoon of the bouillon, so six cups would be two tablespoons, because there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon. And so that's all, it's not that hard to do, it does take time to make your own sauce. How long do you simmer it when you've got all the ingredients together? At 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yep. So that's why I wanted to start with this first, to get this going. So I'll simmer this for 30 minutes and be back to assemble my enchiladas. Okay, now I'm going to make my enchiladas with my the sauce I previously made. Um, basically, um, you mix the chicken, um, cheese, and sour cream. And I put amounts here in the recipe, but it really depends on and, um, if you like a premier, more cheese, more chicken, you could pretty much do what you want to do. And I'm thinking it would be really nice to do Diana's method of putting them in the silicone um, molds, pan, molds um, because this is quite messy. Um, but I've never seen that before, so that's a tip I might try later on. Now I'm going to put, um, let's do three cups of chicken. chicken. Yeah. It says four here, it just depends. And it's cooked and shredded. Um, it's three cups here. And then I'm going to put, do about, um, let's see. This is a third of a cup scoop, so I'm going to do um, about half as much of the chicken as the sour cream. So this, that was two cups, three cups. So I will just do a cup and a scoop, so it'll be a cup and a third, and then about a cup and a third of the cheese. This is a half a cup, so that's one. Two, and then a third, which would be just a little less than the half. More cheese is always good, so it's fine. Um, now you just stir this and make kind of a filling. Um, I do a lot by look. Um, if it doesn't seem creamy enough, I'll add more sour cream. Um, and you know, I could say how many this is going to make but it depends on how full you make your tortillas. Um, so this is all you do for the center. And this looks about the right amount to me. I'll hold it up here. So you get the cheese, the chicken, and the sour cream. And the other thing this is a little harder than my sister's is you hand dip, you hand dip the, um, excuse me, my can here. There you go. Oh, it's not quite. There we go. Um, so I, what, how I do it, let's move this away. Is I just dip them. and then just to be closer to the pan. And I do a couple, and then I just would take some and just put plop some in. That's what I mean, depends on how much you put in there, how many you're gonna get. Um, sometimes the last few are real big, sometimes the last few are kind of skimpy. Um, and then I just roll them up And I just keep doing it on top. It also helps not to, um, I spray the pan with Pam, but it also helps to have some sauce. I never pour the sauce in the pan because it, by the time you put them this way, I just will layer on here. They're soft, and they are flour tortillas. Yeah, they're flour tortillas. So, um, and this recipe calls for it. My husband happens to really like um, flour tortillas instead of the corn. So with all three of these recipes, you can see that it varies as to how you roll that enchilada. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you have a good supply of each ingredient 
and start rolling away and see if it, how it turns out. And you can see how you, I could make these beef, mm -hmm. and yeah. um, we could, I could use a different sauce, and you could use this filling with a different method. It's very so, forgiving. Mm -hmm. So, I tend to get more out of this sauce, is a, quite a good amount. Um, I, I can get, oh, maybe even 20 with this sauce. I'm not making that many this time. And you can cut a lot of this pie out. Oops, I didn't do anyway. So, so for a 9 by 13 pan, you get about 10 or so. We'll count Bonnie's. I've got 10 in my pan. All three of these pans are the same size. 9 by 13. Pretty good, Joanna, just rolling those even after you've got some enchiladas completed in the pan, just rolling them on yeah. top of the first I figured level. the sauce is just getting on them. Yeah. So, there's an upside to that. The idea is make it as easy and uncomplicated as possible. So yeah, about 10 for a 9 by 13 pan. I think I, I can almost do two pans of the sauce. The original recipe said 10, and I was getting a lot more. Yeah. So I, I kind of, I did a little less chicken because I didn't think we wanted. I did three cans, um, three cups of the chicken instead of four. So Often with the red sauce, mom would just put uh, and, uh, cheese. And I notice that Mexican restaurants, Bonnie frequently orders just a good cheese enchilada. That's how she can judge the effectiveness of the sauce. Some uh, Mexican restaurants use canned like we do, and some make homemade like Joanne did, and you can really tell the difference. So I think her benchmark, I haven't asked you, Bonnie, but I think your benchmark is you can tell the quality of the restaurant by how they how well their cheese enchiladas turn out. Yeah. So I have about this, order that. Uh, this much left over and I don't really have room. And so I've done kind of a form of Diana's. I put them on plastic wrap, rolled them up, oh. and then later on for lunch or something, just put them oh. in a tortilla and pour a little sauce on them. That's a so, great tip. Yeah. yeah. Just, like, in, uh, just plastic wrap, plastic. so a little hot dog of, of the leftover. But you can't tell exactly. And so then, next, I will ladle some of the sauce on top, make sure it's good and covered. Oops, I'm getting it all over the stove. So, the flavor really is in the sauce. Just take some cheese. Mm. I'll try not to get the cheese messy. I'll just take some in here. Just kind of sprinkle it on. Okay. The thing, the thing is, if you put cheese on the top, you don't have to have very much, but people think, oh, it's really cheesy if you put some on the top. <laughs> so, okay, there you go. And I Put it in um, if you if you put it in the refrigerator first and do it later. It, cooks, it takes a little longer to cook, but about 350 degrees um, like this for about 30 minutes. But basic, just as it warms through, everything's cooked, warms yes. through, then cheese is bubbly on top. So in a very short time, we have made 30 enchiladas, and the idea is just relax with it and do it the way you'd like to.